we've had an introductory look at the epithelial tissues in short. Now let's move ahead to know the types of these epithelial tissues in detail. Beginning with the first one, which is the simplest of all. The simple squamous epithelium. In this type, we find flat cells lying upon the basement membrane. These being extremely flat or tile-like are also known as pavement epithelium. Their flat nature itself states their function and locations. Such type is mainly used to transport or precisely diffuse substances across membranes and also perform filtration. Does where do you think we will find them? Well, think of the thinnest surfaces in our body, yes. The lining of blood capillaries, in the lining of alveoli and also in the inner lining of mouth. Well, when we talk about epithelial tissue, how can we forget the skin? But wait a second, how can we afford to have such a delicate layer on the surface that covers the entire body? Well, it's simple. The same squamous epithelium comes in the form of layers. So several layers, one above the other, form the outermost layer of skin, which we refer to as the stratified squamous epithelium. Because of multiple layers, the stratified squamous epithelium prevents wear and tear of the upper surface of the skin. Now the next type in our list is the one where we have tall, pillar-like structures. These are referred to as columnar epithelium due to the column-like appearance that they have. Now you may wonder, why do we need such tall cells for covering a surface? Well, such tall cells help to carry out absorption or secretion to a good extent. Thus, according to this function, the best example to locate this type of epithelium is in the inner lining of intestine. Well, sometimes a slight modification is also observed in this type. We find tiny hair-like projections called cilia on the surface of these cells. Now you may wonder, why do these cells need hair? Well, the basic purpose is to move the immovable. Yes, whenever you have certain non-motile substances or cells, then these cilia carry out rhythmic movements that help to move these substances. Thus, this type that is the ciliated columnar epithelium is found to cover the lining of the respiratory tract. Here, it helps to throw out the foreign particles trapped in mucus which enter the respiratory tract. Another location is in the fallopian tubes of the female reproductive system where the cilia help to propel the ovum in the forward direction. Now, these columnar cells are definitely doing their job well but at times, some substances aggressively pass through small channels which are lined by these epithelial cells. So then along with absorption and secretion, we need support too. Here the cuboidal epithelial cells come for our rescue. These cuboidal cells are found lining the kidney tubules, in the thyroid and also in the ducts of the salivary glands. Lastly, we also find certain specialized modifications in these cuboidal cells. They attain the capacity to secrete important substances in the body. These are simply formed by inward folds in the cuboidal cells. The cells are called as gland cells and the tissue is called as glandular epithelium. So where will we find them? Yes, those parts involved in secretions like the salivary glands, mucus glands, gland secreting ear wax, mammary glands and also the glands producing digestive enzymes. Well, with this, we come to the end of the types of epithelial tissues. Do you know what connective tissues are? Watch our next lesson to know more.